Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! I'm not sure if any of y'all successfully guessed what I did wrong. I figured it out. And if some of y'all did figure it out, congrats on you. What I did was I put the wrong resistor as the grid leak resistor for the output tube. I mistakenly installed a 1K resistor in place of a 470K. And I know what happened. I was putting the 1K resistor that goes to the grid of the output tube. And I must have just had 1K resistor in my brain and picked up an, is actually a different kind of style of 1K resistor and put that as the grid leak resistor. I'm actually surprised it worked at all. And putting the 470K in, I'm sure is going to fix the problem because what was happening is the 1K resistor in combination with the 0.1 UF coupling cap was acting like a high pass filter. And it was only letting the highest frequencies go from the phase splitter to the output tubes. So that all makes sense. And again, the voltages and all that I was getting off of this 12AT7, they looked right or they looked reasonable. And I don't think there's any problem with that. And so soldered in a couple of 470Ks and we're going to put this thing back on the scope and see what it looks like. If it runs through the scope test reasonably, we will then put it on the audio analyzer suite and see what the initial non-perfectly tuned in global feedback results look like on the audio analyzer suite. I guess from there, I'll start kind of knocking out the second one of these and then start thinking about whether I really want to spend another $80 on a 550 volt power transformer or just build the second one like this and just go with it. The other thing I could look at doing was putting the 270 ohm cathode resistors back on the output tubes and crank the current up on them and see what that does for the power output and the sound quality. And it may be like a single ended amp that these things like being run hot. Don't know yet. Something we can play with. That's easy enough to do. I've already got the resistors. Don't have to spend any money. Just could swap them out and have one channel set up hot and the other one set up cool and see what the difference sounds like. So anyway, let's get this thing put up on the scope and see if this fixed our problem and if you've got a good performing amp now. Okay, we're back and now we have the issue with that grid leak resistor resolved. And while I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen here, I'm pretty sure that going from a 1K to a 470K grid leak resistor should be a huge improvement. So here we go. We're at 200 hertz and there we go. That's looking pretty good. And there's a little touch of clipping there. We're on the 5 volt scale over here. It might be off camera. But then, so we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 volts peak to peak on the output into an 8 ohm load at 200 hertz. And that should come out to right around 10 watts, maybe just a little more of output before this amp starts clipping. And for these fairly small tubes, I think that's doing pretty good. Especially running them as cool as we are. I think we could probably squeeze a little more power out of this thing by running the tubes up closer to their limits, but I believe we're under 12 watts of dissipation on a 14 watt tube, so that's really safe. So the next thing we want to look at is 
Let's see what it does with a square wave. Yeah, let's move that down a little bit. Because before, remember, it just bare, it had everything over on the left side, all high frequency. And here we go. Looking pretty sweet. It's got a little bit of slope to it, but this is a pretty low frequency square wave, and I'm not surprised to see that. I'm going to switch this out for a 1K signal. So let's see what it does with a 1K square wave. There we go. It's flat all the way across. It's got some ringing on the high end, but I'm not too concerned about that. This has the 5.1K global feedback resistor with a 100 PF cap across it. And while we could change this around and possibly reduce some of this ringing here from my tuning on single ended amps, and I'm gonna assume these push pulls are the same way, that if you tune all of that ringing out and kind of round this off, then that's exactly what it sounds like. The high ends just round it off and the amp sounds dead. So the last thing I want to do is do a pull at about 5K and see what that looks like. And it's a little bit uglier. And it does seem to kind of keep ringing all the way across. So we may need to do a little bit of more tuning on the feedback to get this amp where we want it to be. I'm concerned about going too high up on the capacitor and ending up getting some instability with it, you know, going into oscillation. And again, this is going to take some playing with to try to tune some of this out of it. I'm not... I'm not so concerned about that that I wouldn't like go listen to this amp and see what it sounds like, but that's not ideal. So we still got a little bit of tuning to do on it, but we're getting close, way closer than we were when we had that crazy 1K grid leak resistor in. And the other thing I was going to show you is how you can kind of gauge distortion use it in an oscilloscope. When you lay these on top of each other, you can see they're real close to looking the same. And you have to kind of play with the volume control to get it to match the input. But as you can see, those are real close. Let's go down to, down to like 1K and see what that looks like. And you can see those things are they're just almost right on top of each other. Just disappears down at 1K. So we probably do have a little bit of high frequency tuning to do, but we're real close. And the next thing in our process is to hook this thing up to the audio analyzer suite and run some tests on it and see what kind of power versus THD we get, and see what kind of frequency response range we get. One thing you can do is if you, let me pull this, actually let me, let me turn off the signal generator, and we're going to put this, and get the volume where it's on a line and on a line, and then change the frequency and see if the output level changes. And as you can see, it's not changing at all. So that's showing me that this thing's going to have pretty even frequency response across the range as the amplitude of the signal is it changing with the frequency? And then we'll go ahead and scroll, do kind of a rope low frequency sweep, and see what it looks like in these lower ranges. And that's down at 100 hertz. 
And as you can see, the volume stays even from 100 to 1,000 hertz. So I'm suspecting this thing's going to do really good on the frequency response pull as well. So let's disconnect all the scope stuff and hook it up to the audio analyzer suite and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got the amp warmed up and we've got it hooked up to the audio analyzer suite with the analog discovery too. And we're going to make our first pull. We're going to have it on channel one. Going to go low power up to 100 watts. We're going to be, because the other choice is 10 watts, and I think we're hoping we're going to go past that. It looked like that we should be able to, um, you know, get past uh, 10 watts, look like maybe 12 watts or something like that, or 11. We'll see what we come up with, and uh, we'll have it stop at 5% distortion. We're going to test it at a thousand hertz. And let's see what this thing does. Already down super low. Coming up. And there we go. And wow, look at that. I mean, when it hits clipping, it just hard clips. So we've got under 1% distortion right up to 12 watts. Hits 1% distortion at 12 watts and then it just skyrockets at just hard clip. So got a 12 watt amp. That's pretty impressive for how soft we're running these tubes. I know the ST35, they had them running on the verge of melting to get their claimed 17 watts, but I think it was at like 10% distortion. And if, we, if we're going to make that claim, you know, we're making 14 watts at 5% distortion. So, and almost 14 watts at 2% distortion. So, but we wouldn't be listening to it up there. We would probably keep it at 12 watts or under, but quite impressive. So let's go over here, and I already did a THD versus frequency pull, and we have it set on 5 watts, which is fairly high for doing this kind of testing, and it's down below 1%. And interestingly, it starts going up after about 5K, and goes up to you know, about 2% by the time we get up to 10K. I think this area in here has got something to do with the global feedback setup or adjustment on it. Like we saw in the scope that there was some ringing, especially at higher frequencies, and that's probably what we're seeing here. So I think with some tuning on the feedback, we can get this area down here down below 1% too. This part down here is more likely due to the output transformers, but that's still quite low for 5 watt reading. And then let's do a frequency response pull. 0.2 to 0.5 is usually where I make this reading. Let's see what we get here. It's already looking very good. Got a little bit of tiny bit of roll off on the bottom end. Down here at 20 hertz, there's 1 dB down. But if you look at it, it peaks at negative 3 on this chart. So it's 1 dB down from its peak down at 20 hertz and it does seem to get a little bright up here on the top end as it goes past 10k and again I feel like this is probably the feedback tuning and that once we do a little bit more feedback tuning on it we'll be able to tone this range down may need a little more negative feedback 
we'll see. Again, I have it on the 16 ohm tap, and as you all know, I'm a big fan of the shade feedback, and I really haven't done a lot of global feedback, and so it's probably going to take me some experimentation to kind of figure this out and see where this needs to be to get this amp where I want to see it. So, to me, this right here is super impressive. I mean, down here in the, you know, at the 3 and 4 watt range, 5 watts, you got less than a, you know, around a half a percent of distortion. This thing's going to sound really sweet. And this is definitely, given how small these tubes are, this is the highest power amp that I have right now. And so, I think this is going to be a good thing to use with some of these DIY speakers that are lower efficiency to be able to test them out. We'll probably be doing videos about that soon. But anyway, I think that kind of covers the audio analyzer suite part of this. And so far, I'm super impressed with this. Like I said, I think a little more tuning on it, and this thing's going to sound amazing. Well, as you can see, putting the right components in this amplifier fixed all the problems that we were seeing earlier and everybody say hi to Dolly she's going up to get a snack anyway really turned out good the scope patterns look beautiful the audio analyzer suite came out good we've still got some fine tuning to do on the global feedback circuit got to play around with possibly moving the resistor to another ohm tap I've, since it's on the 16 ohm tap try it on the 8 and the 4 play around with the value of that resistor play around with the a bypass cap on it a little bit don't want to go too high or make this thing unstable but I do think it could be tuned a little bit plus I need to do some listening and play around with the feedback and just maybe not look at the scope as closely and use my ears more and tune this thing to what it sounds good with this output transformer and whatever other kind of compromises this has being a DIY amp. So anyway, I'm excited. I'm really glad that we were able to figure out that problem, move forward, and like I said, going to work on this mirror copy, probably going to do most of that off camera, but I may come back and since I didn't show a lot of the soldering of the components when I was building this one and I showed all the fab work, I may do all the fab work off camera and then do more of a kind of a low key couple of videos of me just working and soldering up the amplifier because I know some of y'all enjoy just watching me build stuff. So I think we'll probably do that on the second copy. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying this series. Hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please hit the bell so that you get notifications when a new video comes up. Like the video. We're so close to 5,000 subs, and by the time this gets published, we might be over 5,000 subs. Love that so many people are enjoying this content. I really enjoy making it, and anyway, We'll see you on the next round of this video. Have a great day.